Every other spring I go to Holland and I visit loads of tulip breeders and tulip suppliers and I go to Kirkenhof Gardens where they tend to have almost every tulip that's currently in production and I go to a beautiful place called Hortus Balborum which is um, at Limmel about an hour from Schiphol Airport, about an hour from Amsterdam and there I take endless pictures and try and come back with the idea for the following autumn to plant lots and lots of the tulips I've fallen in love with with the idea of individual beauties but also putting them together in collections and then that autumn they arrive and we plant them in the collections that I've sort of designed in the spring and a year on from when I've seen them we have them growing and here we are so this is our tulip trial and most of these I adore, not all, but most of them I do. And just to talk you through um, individual varieties plus collections, this is brown sugar, which is scented. And I love coppery brown tulips. And so this is one of my absolute favourites. And we've got that in a pot this year, as well as in here in the trial garden. And it's truly, truly beautiful. And then in the corner over there is what I call the scented fire collection. So that's a new collection. And that has got four tulips in it, two of which are highly scented. Request, Ballerina, Red Spring Green and Typhoon, which is the bright, bright red one. And uh, those are beautiful, planted with the blood red wallflower um, or, you know, one of the dark red wallflowers. And then you've got even more scent. And then coming down a bit, um, what I've got here is the peony flower tulip collection and to be honest I've picked an awful lot from this already so this is looking a little bit denuded now but this is the dark rich peony flowers the double lates and um, in here we've got things like antraset and black hero and um, and this new double which is a, a, a sport of princess Irene called orange princess um, and then this lovely purple called royal acres so that's definitely going to be a new collection and then this one was a bit of an experiment and this was what I sort of was thinking of either kind of William Morris collection or perhaps Vivian Westwood collection, not quite sure yet, but quite outrageous, quite sort of blousy, quite over the top. Because I think it's fun with tulips, it's not all to be too tasteful, I think it's good fun sometimes to really go for it. So that's another possibility. And I saw this extraordinary one called Queen's Day, which obviously in a herbaceous border, a sort of traditional herbaceous border, would be totally over the top and really too vulgar and too kind of large and, and um, sort of I'm loud and I'm proud type thing. But as a cut flower, that's the important thing to remember, is the same rules don't apply and that makes a fabulous cut flower. And you want to be loud as a cut flower, really, because, you know, what's the point of cutting it? Bring it inside, just have a single stem on your kitchen table, fabulous. This, this particular collection here I'm really excited about um, because this is this one that there's lots of, the pointy, very dark crimson one is called Sarah Raven, so it's my own tulip. And the reason that I've got my own tulip is that this variety, which is called Burgundy, isn't really burgundy at all, it's more purple. I love it, but it's purple. And I think there's a real gap in the market for this dark, dark crimson port wine red variety in the lily flag group, which are my absolute favorites. So I think that's really exciting because it's rich and it's elegant and it's early and it's very long flowering. These have already been flower for three weeks. So I think that's a cracking tulip. But in this collection, I'm mixing it with green flowered varieties which I know sounds slightly bizarre, but there's a, a variety called Evergreen, which is quite late, which is just coming here. And I think that with that in a vase looks really splendid. So that's the green and black collection. And then over here, we've got the paler colors. So I like keeping the dark rich colors and the bright colors separate to the paler colors because otherwise they sort of jar, they kind of clash. So I've put the pale colors over here. And this is the pale, uh, peony tulip collection and again very William Morrissey very kind of wallpapery and you've got beautiful ones like this fantastic La Belle Epoque and then you've got Dance Line and um, and I mean just all of these are very beautiful really sort of luscious doubles very long lasting in the vase that's what's good about them this is um, my stab at the Marilyn Monroe collection and the point about these is that it's meant to be full-on girly action 
And actually, this one I think is too much. This is, uh, I'm not going to include that. But that's, you know, really, really pink and lovely and sort of pretty and soft and girly. And then this is the final new collection this year, uh, which is what I'm going to call the butterfly collection. And the point of these is when I saw them in gardens in Holland last spring, they looked like beautiful butterflies. When they fully open in the sun, they literally splay out and they look like you've got just a whole scattering of butterflies all over the tulips. And so I selected four varieties, Tray Chic, um, Florosa, Green Star and this lovely, beautiful pointy one which opens right out called Bonaire and literally just reminded me so much of a brimstone butterfly. That's what was the sort of inspiration for this collection. So. We put them in a trial like this, and then we've also put them in pots around the garden to see how they perform there as well. And then, and then at this time of year, we judge them, put them together, maybe refine the collection a bit, exclude some like I'm going to exclude that. Uh, some maybe are too short, some too tall. And so you refine it, and then you end up with things that I think look and work beautifully together.